Oh, hello. <laughs> I'm just back with another video talking about my thoughts that no one wants to hear. Okay, let's get into it. So there has been a lot of drama happening in the beauty community lately. There's been a lot of speculation over where the community is headed. There's been a lot of people discussing what they feel like the issues are, uh, all those different kinds of things. And I'm gonna talk about that today. I do have a little note compiled. So if I'm looking down, it's because I'm trying to reference my uh, notes so that I stay moderately on track and don't get like completely going off into like a little tangent, which I, I've, I've done once or twice, <laughs> I'll admit. I'm gonna be getting ready while I do this just because it's more interesting to look at, um, but I'm probably not gonna be speaking too much to what I'm doing. I will list everything that I use in the uh, description box so you guys can reference that afterwards. So this is the issue that I've been seeing. I feel like a lot of people are trying to dismantle what the issues of this industry are, but only from their perspective. So you have brands saying what the issue is from their perspective. You have influencers saying what the issue is from their perspective. And then you have consumers saying what the issue is from their perspective. So I wanted to kind of attack this based on all three parties that uh, contribute to all of this. I'm gonna start doing my foundation. I'm using Natasha Denona Face Glow and I'm mixing it with that little Vichy Mineral 89 thing I talked about the other day. I kept trying to take the cap off. <laughs> There's no cap. <sighs> yeah. Before we jump into this, I just wanna relay the reality that this is my experience. I'm a consumer and an influencer, but I would be majority probably taking my opinion from the influencer side of things. So just keep that in mind. Take everything I say with a grain of salt because this is my personal experience. So the issue that I see with brands is that they don't feel like they're getting their return on investment right now. If you're not aware of like what that essentially means, it just basically means brands are investing dollars into this industry and they don't feel like they're getting back enough to make investing those dollars worthwhile. Personally, I feel like based on people I've talked to, um, based on articles that I've read, uh, WWD recently released an article talking about how they feel like influencers aren't bringing return on investment, blah, blah, blah. It feels like the overwhelming majority of brands are kind of pointing the finger to influencers and saying they aren't bringing the return on investment anymore. This is leading to a lot of consumers believing that, uh, brands are about to start pulling their money out of the influencer marketing machine. I disagree. I don't think that will happen, first of all. I think a big issue with brands is that they are spending their money in a way that doesn't benefit anybody. Sending out really lavish, over the top, super expensive PR packages. This is really, really, really expensive to do because you're creating such a limited quantity that you have really increased prices on the production of that PR package. So, you know, when you have people sending you uh, additional things like Roombas or, you know, they have NARA sent out a really beautiful package that was like kind of this, like really super, super heavy box that you opened up and it had like a doll that's that was spinning in it and stuff like that. Um, and it was beautiful, but it, it went in the garbage and or recycling. And I think that the issue is sometimes you have these brands who have hundreds of people on their PR list and they're sending out these packages that they are making more and more and more extravagant and expensive because they feel like not enough people are posting about them. So they're trying to make something so eye-catching that people will feel more obligated to post about this package. And I think the issue as to why people aren't posting is because there's such saturation in every single aspect of this industry. You have so many brands coming out, so many influencers, so many products, so many launches, so many things to keep up with that I'll tell you right now how I deal with my PR as an influencer. I get about 30 packages a week of PR. I organize that PR based on this structure. I have a pile of things that you guys are really excited about that you really want me to review. Things like, you know, Subculture or the Norvina palette, um, any kind of like highly anticipated launches. That is like my first priority. That's what I put in a pile that I'm like, I need to film with this as soon as I can because this is what people wanna see. Then I post about things that I'm personally excited about, um, brands that I have a stronger relationship with so I know a little bit more of what went into the product so that excites me in turn. 
And then I have some products that either immediately get donated because nobody has any interest in them, or I personally have zero interest in them, um, or I have some issue with the way that it was marketed or whatever, um, which gets donated. And then there's other products that like I'll keep because I'm kind of interested in it and I'll see if people maybe want to like thing down the line or maybe I'll use it eventually. But like there's a huge group of products that fall into that last group. And before we get any further with the PR talk, I know so many people feel like like they would be so grateful to receive PR and that we should be so grateful to receive PR. I need to put my concealer on, otherwise I'm gonna like finish the whole video just like this. But I think that a lot of people kind of perceive influencers as being entitled because we are donating this product, um, we're not as excited about certain product, we don't post about certain product, whatever, but you have to understand again, yes, you would be excited because you are a consumer that's spending money on this product, but the brand isn't sending out this product to be nice. The brand is sending out this product because they want free promotion. It's their first line of attack. It's their first line of marketing that costs them very, very little versus, uh, you know, having to pay people thousands of dollars to talk about that product. Jumping back to why people sometimes don't post PR packages, simply put, it would be almost impossible to talk about every single launch that we're receiving in the mail. So you have to kind of prioritize what, you know, is, is going to be talked about. And I think a huge issue is that brands are really focusing on pumping out product, but not necessarily product that's thought out or inventive. Um, it's just kind of whatever. And a lot of the times it's starting to become really subpar quality. As an influencer, I'm receiving this product and I'm either saying, okay, this is a really boring launch. I don't really want to talk about this and not enough people are asking me to talk about it. So I'm not going to, or I'm trying your product and I'm feeling like it's pretty, you know, um, substandard quality. So I'm, I'm not that inclined to want to talk about it. And I feel like the other issue is that because there's such a saturation of products in this industry, you kind of are faced with the problem of, you know, what once was really, really good quality is now not really that high quality anymore. So something that we used to use back in the day and think this is the best foundation I've ever tried. Well, there's so many foundations on the market now that we're more likely to be able to find something um, that you know has a finish that we like more, that lasts longer, that matches me better, versus a foundation that I used five years ago that was a good foundation at that time. So much has progressed in this industry, so now it's like you're not only competing to be seen and competing for those sales, but you're also competing quality-wise because you have so many more people coming onto the market and you have so many more people that are producing higher quality products that it's like you need to be willing to get on board with that. So for me, the issue with brands is they're not getting a return on investment, which they're blaming influencers for. They're spending too much money on things like PR and brand trips that really benefit nobody. And I think that a lot of the times brands are unwilling to collaborate on what might bring the best return on investment. There's a lot of times where brands will send through either scripts or very, very, very thorough talking points in terms of what they want you to talk about in a sponsored video. And a lot of the times they will send through specific products that they want featured as well. So my personal experience as an influencer has been that I will usually talk to the brand and say, Hey, you know what? Like I would never say something like this. Um, I know that that was in your brief as something that you really wanted said, but like I personally, like I just wouldn't ever speak to this in a brand. Like there's just some things that brands want you to talk about that you as a consumer or an influencer would either A, never know, or B, like you would hear it and be like, oh, okay, but I don't really care. And the brands I find are very unwilling to actually collaborate on what we believe will give them the best return on investment because this is the thing, if you have brand a coming to me saying, you need to talk about brand A like we do. That's not why you're hiring me. I, I have my following, I have my return on investment because I talk about things the way that I do versus talking about things like you do and this brand does and this brand does. I'm talking about my personal experience with these products and that's what's gonna resonate with my audience. So rather than listening to influencers and what might bring them the best return on investment, they're pushing their own narrative. And I understand because you're transitioning from traditional media where you controlled every single aspect of what was said and what was done and there was nothing that was public to you know um your consumer it was all private it was all done behind the scenes nobody knew what kind of money was exchanging hands nobody knew the kind of talk that was going on behind the scenes like none of this was discussed publicly and so brands have a really hard time relinquishing that kind of control because for decades we've been um going the route of traditional media then 
we move on to the issues with influencers. And you know what? Like I've been open from the beginning about how I personally feel about influencers. And you know, I've tried to uh, blow the whistle a few times on some things that I haven't agreed with. Listen, I'm the first person to bitch and moan about the people in this industry. There are so many shitty, 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 horrible people that are doing so well, and none of you know anything that goes on behind the scenes, how these people treat others, and it is frustrating. It's frustrating to be a part of that and to, to think that, you know, you have to watch these shitty people do really well. But I think, again, the issue is so many people pointing the finger at influencers rather than recognizing all the contributing factors. So this is what I think the issue with influencers are. I think a huge issue is undisclosed sponsorships. I think there are a lot of people that are choosing not to disclose because they notice that it brings a smaller return on investment. And I think that there are a lot of people choosing not to disclose because they feel like that makes them have to limit how many sponsored posts they're doing. For instance, I start to get a little uncomfortable when I even have um, like two sponsored videos a month. I start to be like, ooh, uh, that doesn't look so good because it looks like, you know, uh, a, a large percentage of my content is sponsored. And same thing on Instagram. I wouldn't post more than one sponsored thing a week because I would feel like that was too many sponsorships versus if I wasn't disclosing it, I would be posting a sponsored post every other day because you don't know that I'm getting paid for it. So it, it releases that fear of you being upset that I'm over sponsored. So, you know, you have people that unfortunately are perceived as the people that are not sellouts because... Okay, well, that was rude, as I was saying. So, unfortunately, the issue of what started happening was that a lot of the people who were actually posting the most sponsored content were being perceived as the people who um, weren't sellouts and they didn't need to do that and they were genuine still and blah, 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 but it was just because they weren't disclosing, not because they weren't taking those sponsorships. So, I think a huge issue with influencers is, is not disclosing. I think another big issue is that a lot of influencers are scared scared for multiple reasons people all the time are like oh you're just scared of being kicked off pr i mean yes that's a fear for some but i think that it more so comes down to the fear that if you say something negative that a brand may not want to work with you again which ultimately affects your bottom line and i just think it's interesting that a lot of people seem to feel like this is such unusual behavior because i mean i just can't picture most of you in your job going to your boss and telling him to like stick it where the sun don't shine because you would know that that would ultimately result in you losing your job and you not having an income. It's just, it's interesting how people kind of, uh, discuss this industry specifically um, when you know a lot of the things that go on are things that many of you would do the exact same thing for instance if you were um, you know applying for jobs and you got back two offers one offer was someone saying hey I'll pay you minimum wage and the other offer was someone saying hey I'll pay you sixty thousand dollars a year would you say I'll take the minimum wage I, I feel like I'm gonna be overpaid for this job if I take the sixty thousand dollars a year or would you be like yeah I sixty thousand let's make it seventy so again, you have a lot of people that are scared to lose sponsorships, a lot of people that are scared to you know, offend the brand and honestly offend the audience because here's the issue. I am posting this video knowing that a lot of you will disagree with me, <laughs> knowing that a lot of brands will be upset by what I'm saying. You know, everyone demands this level of honesty, but they're unwilling to recognize what the cost of that honesty is sometimes. Everybody loves honesty when it's agreeable. Everyone loves honesty when it's a belief they already hold. And everybody loves honesty when it's something that they feel is like pretty stomachable. People suddenly do not like honesty when it's something that they disagree with. And I think that that's the issue. It's like you're kind of backing people into a corner saying, I want you to be honest. But then when they are, you're calling them unprofessional, you're calling them catty, uh, you know, like you, you suddenly take issue with what they're saying, but it's just like, that's, that's, their honest truth. And this was something that, you know, I've seen a lot of people recently be like, well, how can you say that you're not all about the money when you openly admitted that like, you find this job unfulfilling and you stay in it because of money. That is the honest truth. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you guys that I am fulfilled by something I'm not. And that's not to say that I'm not passionate about makeup. That's not to say that I don't sometimes enjoy my job. That's not to say that every single part of it is like soul crushing because that's not the case. It's just that generally speaking, I don't find taking photos of myself and videos of myself talking 
to be particularly fulfilling work. But it's hard to step away from that because I am making money that I would struggle to make in other industries. So if we're just being realistic, that doesn't mean my morals are compromised. That doesn't mean I've been taking sponsorships that I wouldn't normally take or that I disagree with or promoting product I don't like. It just is the reality of my job. I don't find it fulfilling, but I know that I can't make this kind of money elsewhere. So I stay in this job. Then with influencers, you run into the issue of people that are entitled and people that are social climbers and people that are willing to step on toes uh, to get to where they wanna be. There are a lot of influencers that are kind of shite people. They use people, they say things they don't mean, they do undisclosed sponsorships, they step on toes, they cause drama. Like there's a lot of that going on in the industry. And I think the thing that's important to acknowledge is that a lot of us contribute to that at some point or another. I think the reality is that this industry is not unlike every other industry in that there's a lot of people that are really shitty doing really well. It's not something that exists just in the beauty industry, it exists in every industry and it sucks, but it's just, it's just the reality of life. And I think that so many people are searching for answers and searching for ways to, you know, stop this. And, and I get it, it's so annoying, it's so frustrating, it's hard to watch, it's hard to add to, but there will always be shitty people. I think that you need to focus on supporting the people that you don't feel are that way rather than getting so up in arms about the people that are that way. Then there's the issue that a lot of people discuss about how much influencers are paid because it's kind of starting to come to light more and more. Uh, people are talking about it a little bit more. Um, brands are every now and again kind of releasing information regarding how much they've spent on marketing or how much influencers are asking to be paid. Um, some influencers have discussed it, myself included. I think a big issue is that people hear the kinds of numbers that that influencers are making and first of all they apply it to the whole industry they hear one person say one figure and they assume that everyone's making that kind of money so recently uh, Marlena who owns um, makeup geek um, she posted a video talking about how you know some influencers had uh, told her that she needed to pay them $60,000 for one video. The issue that happens there is that people are, first of all, outraged. <laughs> and secondly, people are led to assume that uh, everyone is making $60,000 a video. And I think a lot of people take issue with this and rightfully so because it falls into the same old rhetoric of why are basketball players paid so much money? Why does Kim Kardashian make as much as she does? Why this, why that? And I think that, you know, people have such an issue with um, that distribution of wealth and it's it's frustrating. And I know a lot of people are gonna disagree with me on this one, but I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna say it. People have far less of an issue with men making that kind of money than they do with women. That's all I'm gonna say about that. I just needed to touch on that, dip my toes in, and now, and now I'm getting out. But I think the other issue is that, you know, people are so outraged that this industry makes as much money as it does, but it only makes that much money because of so many people contributing to it. And I think that, I think that it's hard because like, it's, it's obviously not realistic for me to say, if you are mad that the makeup industry is making that much money, don't buy makeup. But I think that what you need to do is be willing to be a smart consumer. And I think you need to be willing to look at the brands and the influencers who you feel are doing it right and support those brands and influencers selectively. It's, it's not going to change. And if it does change, it certainly won't be anytime soon. So you need to be willing to recognize that Yes, there is a lot of money going around and yes, it's disturbing figures, but it, it just is the reality of this market and this market has that kind of money because it has that kind of consumption from the consumer. So now we get into the third party and that's you baby, the consumer. We are in an age where we know more now than we ever did. Just think about, you know, the magazines you grew up with, the advertising you grew up with, all that kind of shit you knew nothing about what went on behind the scenes. There was always brand trips. It was just with magazine editors and you didn't know they were happening. It's, it's sort of this catch 22 because in a way it's, it's been so beneficial that, you know, we have had the opportunity for consumers to kind of had the wool pulled back a little bit and be able to know more about this industry than they did initially. But I think the downside of that is, is this. Consumers end up putting faith in these brands because they feel like as soon as this brand release releases like a shred of honesty, they perceive it as true, genuine honesty and wanting to connect with the consumer rather than marketable honesty. Don't ever take anything in business as someone just being nice, 
someone just doing the right thing. Where money lives, that's not the reality. <sighs> Ooh, do I wanna say this? Mm, yes. Even in the realm of brands using uh, members of the LGBT community for marketing, people of color, um, any, any, kind of, any kind of minority, any time that they are used for marketing, why now? Years and years and years of all of these brands catering to exclusively white people. And now suddenly everybody is jumping on the train of inclusivity. Why? Because it's marketable, not because they care. So I think that consumers are putting their faith into brands when they shouldn't be. I think that consumers are putting their faith into influencers when they shouldn't be. And a lot of the times that's because you guys watch my video and one of the most common comments that I get is that you feel like you're watching a friend or you feel like we're friends in your mind or whatever. And it's awesome and it's funny and I think about you guys in the same way, but there's so much issue with that. Because you view me like a friend and you possibly view other influencers like a friend, you never are going to think that a, that a friend is going to do something that could potentially put you in a bad position, that could potentially cause you to lose money, that could potentially mislead you. And so I think it's hard because, you know, we have this industry that for the first time ever is really, really bridging the gap between consumers and brands. Like you guys feel like you're more connected, your questions are answered, um, you know, like you feel like we're kind of giving you a little peek into the industry and, and you're taking it as camaraderie when it's not. And I think that people are starting to become privy to this. I think people are starting to understand that this is what's happening. Consumers that feel really taken advantage of and because of that, they're wanting to kind of regain some of that control, which is understandable. And I understand why so many consumers feel like they've been taken for a ride, but it leads to, again, the whole issue of wanting heads on spikes. So you have consumers that are watching a review, positive review, going and buying that same product having that product not work for them, and then feeling like that influencer is now inherently a liar. And the issue with that mentality is not only that you are only taking that person's review and running with it, but also that you now feel like that person is a liar when in reality, it could just be that like, we have different skin types or moreover, we have different preferences. Think about this for a second. Like, what does this lead to? You're asking for honesty. Someone gives it to you, whether it's positive or negative. You completely rely on their opinion. You get angry if their opinion is not in line with yours. This person decides they're no longer to be honest. And it sounds sad, it shouldn't be that way, but it's true. And, and a lot of people are wondering why influencers aren't more honest, but there's such downside to being honest because quite frankly, I've been ripped to shreds on more than one occasion for sharing my honest opinion. And I've talked about this so many times where, you know, you guys praise me for being honest and you praise me for being myself and you praise me for not putting on some fake, you know, bubbly attitude when that's not me until I do a video with a boyfriend and then you guys feel like I'm not treating him properly because I'm still speaking to him the way that I normally speak. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm obviously generalizing when I'm saying you guys, I know that the majority of you are like totally fine with whatever. But what that leads to is me saying, I don't wanna do videos with my boyfriend because I know I get torn to shreds for acting how I would normally act just because Matt is in the video. That causes so many people to say, well, then I'm not going to share my honest experience. I'm gonna keep my mouth shut and not deal with all of this backlash. A lot of consumers want to know the truth without having any of the background knowledge to actually apply to that truth. For instance, when you go into a restaurant and you ask how long it's going to be and the hostess at the front tells you, mm, yeah, it looks like it's gonna be about 45 minutes. So many people's immediate response is, there's 12 tables that aren't seated right there. You're not thinking about the fact that they haven't staffed that section. You're not thinking about the fact that they're already overrun with a bunch of underpaid workers. You're just thinking about what you see and your perception of it without knowing or having worked in the restaurant industry. And this to me is the issue with people asking for truth from the industry when you don't have that background knowledge. Because listen, if I sit here right now and I tell you, yeah, some of the top tier influencers are charging $60,000 for a video, you're going to be outraged. That is double most people's yearly salary. You're missing all of this vital information and, and you're not recognizing everything else that goes into this industry outside of that one monetary 
value. You are so quick to feel like this is ridiculous. People are wildly overpaid. Why is the consumer's dollar going there? And I think that the biggest thing that you as a consumer need to recognize is really understanding what you're asking for. You know, I, I see a lot of outrage over people saying influencers shouldn't be paid that much. So let's, let's just take the figure of, um, you know, an influencer getting paid $60,000 for a video, which to 99.9% .9 of the population is, is ridiculous. That $60,000 that you're demanding not be paid to an influencer, it doesn't just cease to exist. It doesn't go back into the pockets of the consumer. So what you're essentially asking when you're saying that influencers shouldn't be paid that much or paid at all is that that money is going directly back into the pocket of that multi-million or possibly billion dollar brand. When you're asking for influencers to not receive PR on top of not being paid to talk about products because that's how it used to be, you're saying, again, you want the brand to profit even more and have no expenses and you want the influencer to pay for every purchase that you don't want to buy yourself because you want me to buy it first, try it out and tell you whether or not you should spend your hard earned money on it. You want me to buy that out of my own pocket. And then furthermore, you want me to never be paid for anything because then you're going to perceive me as having lost all sense of my, my genuine uh, morality. <laughs> and, it's, and it's really interesting because I feel like a lot of the times the consumer is, is unknowingly siding with these multi, multi, multi million dollar corporations. I think a lot of people are under the impression that um, the influencer market is going to crash. I think a lot of people are under the impression that uh, brands are going to stop paying influencers. And this is what I think is gonna happen. I don't think that the marketing dollars are going to stop being poured into influencer marketing. I think that while a lot of companies say that they are having a hard time right now and are complaining about how they're not getting enough of a return on investment, uh, I think that they still recognize that this is far more cost effective and far more effective in general than traditional marketing ever was. I think what's going to happen is brands are going to start being more private about what's taking place again because the backlash has been from the honesty. <laughs> because if we really think about this for a second, if you didn't know about any beauty gurus past, if you didn't know about any fights that took place privately, if you didn't know about any money that's changed hands, you would just blindly support most people and most brands. If we didn't know about animal testing, if we didn't know about marketing dollars, any of these things that go into business, we would just continue to blindly support these businesses because we don't know any better. I feel like the response to the backlash, the response to the lack of sales is going to result in people being less forthcoming because it hasn't worked for this industry. I personally feel like the only reason this industry is what it is, is because of the honesty, because of the feeling that it's genuine. So even if you don't perceive certain influencers to be genuine, I can guarantee you find them to be more genuine than a Pepsi commercial with Britney Spears. There's a reason that this media is being consumed the way that it is. And I think it's because people wanna change. They want to feel like people are more genuine. They wanna feel like they're supporting something that they actually want to get behind. All those kinds of things go into this. So I think that keeping that level of honesty is absolutely pertinent. You need to find a happy medium. A huge issue that I see is people spreading misinformation or half the story. A huge issue that I see is people not taking the full story into account. If a friend came to you and they said, hey, our other friend was talking about you, they said all these things, blah, 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 and they went on and on and on and on and on and told you all these horrible things that your other friend said about you, most people would be like, fuck that friend. That friend's a shitty friend. I can't believe she would talk about me like that. I gave her everything. Like you would be upset and you'd be offended and you'd be like, thank you for telling me. You don't stop to think. So what you're telling me is that this friend just casually came up to you and started dragging my name through the mud and you sat there defending my honor? Or was this more likely a conversation where 
you were already talking about me or this person was talking about me and you joined in and this conversation went on for hours. And I think that that's the issue. You are believing whoever delivers the information first rather than trying to backtrack and think about what that actually means, what could have actually gone on, what what's happening behind the scenes that you don't know about. And so I feel like a lot of what happens in this community is that one person starts a narrative and then there's a whole group of people that are trying to dismantle that narrative because because it's destructive and it's not helpful. And then you have uh, the group of people that heard it from this original person feeling like, well, you're just taking it personally. Well, you're just trying to protect your own ass. Well, you're just scared, blah, blah, blah. But it's just like, it goes on and on and on and on and on of someone creating a narrative and someone trying to dismantle it. Someone creating a narrative, someone trying to dismantle it. So I think it's hard because I think that there is a need for people to be more honest, more genuine, and I think that that is what makes this industry tick. And I think it's hard because I obviously can't sit here and tell you to suck it up when there's something going on that, be it honest or not, you don't agree with. But my fear is that ultimately that honesty is being slowly chipped away at and slowly taken away from the consumer and from this industry because it's receiving more backlash than it is good. I want to talk to you guys about how I feel this is solved. I think there's a lot of people right now saying what they wish the community was, but the fact of the matter is that's not what is being consumed by the general public. For instance, I have a lot of people that comment on my videos and other people's beauty videos saying they wish it was about tutorials again. They wish that people were posting tutorials because, you know, everyone's doing these dramatic videos or, uh, you know, tag videos or challenges or whatever that are pretty useless content. The issue is those tutorials aren't being consumed at the same rate that all these other things are, are being consumed at. If you want to see a change in this industry and you want to see good people on top, this is what you need to do. First of all, you need to be a smart consumer. Don't just go based off what one person told you, what one brand told you, what one person said. Think about the motives behind everything that's said and done. Even my video here today, what is my motive? What's my motive behind this video? It's to continue to my narrative from my perspective. It's to, you know, try and tame down some of the backlash because now I have people flooding my DMs asking if I don't talk about brands unless I'm paid $60,000. I wish. So really start thinking to yourself, what are people's reasoning behind doing what they're doing, behind releasing the products they're releasing, behind their marketing campaign, behind what they're saying in a video, behind what they're saying on Twitter. Take everything with a grain of salt. Don't ever take one person's perspective and build your opinion based off of that. Build your own opinion based off all of the knowledge from everything that you've collected and, and what you genuinely think and believe. So rather than sitting here and watching me put on that glitter eyeliner and think, God damn, that glitter eyeliner is so nice, go into Sephora, swatch it yourself, try it out, go somewhere that has a return policy where if you don't like the product, you can return it if you need to so that you're not wasting your money. Think to yourself, do I actually need that or do I have a glitter eyeliner that is suiting me just fine? And furthermore, if you're unhappy about certain people being on top, don't support them. Don't watch their videos. Don't follow them on Twitter. Follow their Instagram. Do not support those people. If there's brands doing things that you don't like, yes, you can be vocal about it, but at the end of the day, don't support them with your dollar. But also recognize that you only know half the story and whatever story you're being told is because it fits someone else's narrative. Now I'm using my Hourglass Caution Mascara. You need it. It's black, but it's like a different black. Like it's like a black you've never seen before, like extra carbon black and it's like not not perceivable by the human eye which is like really unique that's my thoughts basically i feel like this is not an issue of one person or one group of people alone i think it comes down to the brand i think it comes down to the influencers i think it comes down to the consumer and we all have to do our part to make this industry what we want it to be so if you are a brand, let's strategize how we can make your return on investment better. Let's strategize from the influencer's point of view, from the consumer's point of view of what's going to work, what's going to be the most well-received, etc. If you are an influencer, don't undervalue yourself. Don't feel like you are entitled for asking market rate in terms of payment. Recognize that brands are not doing anything to be nice. They are doing things for business purposes only. If you are a consumer, be a smarter consumer. Take everything said with a grain of salt from brands, influencers, other consumers. Understand that everything is being told from a very specific narrative that fits with that agenda of that person, brand, or influencer. And lastly, 
enjoy who you want to enjoy. Lift up the people that you feel like are doing it right. And thank you so much for coming to my TED talk. <laughs> All right, you guys, that is my thoughts on the industry. That is my thoughts on what I believe the industry uh, has issues with from my perspective. I'd really love to keep having a conversation with you guys about this in the comment section. Please feel free to comment your thoughts. Keep it respectful, of course. Um, please don't start bashing anyone uh, or each other or in me. <laughs> I'm sensitive. Please always remember that as a subscriber of mine, I will never delete your comment for disagreeing with me. The only time I delete comments is if they are like downright slanderous, like you're just calling me a bitch and a cunt and saying I'm the worst person. Or if they are racist, homophobic, all that kind of shit. I wanna be able to have this conversation with you guys. I wanna know more from your perspective as solely a consumer, as a smaller influencer, as a bigger influencer, as a brand. Whoever may be watching this video, I really would love to hear more about, <laughs> sorry, the dogs are doing some shit over there. Uh, I'd really love to hear more from your perspective uh, in terms of what you think the issue with the industry is and hopefully how we can correct it because I don't wanna sit here and bitch and moan and not offer solutions. So uh, let's make this a, a better place for all of us um, and hopefully start, uh, you know, phasing out the shitty parts of the industry. Okay, bye. Peace out.